Hey, welcome to the weekly warm up. These are drawing exercises that I do every week. I actually do them every day, but I like to share them every week with you. Um, I usually start with a classic scribble challenge. Today, we're going to do that a little bit differently. And then I'm going to work on some gesture drawing today, some like action line stuff, how to draw small and draw every day. We're going to get into all that in this episode. So stay tuned. Now, I said we're going to start off usually with a scribble challenge, and that's where we do a little scribble and then we draw what we see. And today we're going to do a little bit differently. So uh, using pareidolia, that's where you get to see things in things, right? So it's a very powerful exercise. It kind of gets your uh, imagination moving as well. And I'm going to use um, this photo that I actually took uh, on my trip to Joshua Tree this past summer. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at this photo. Put this up a little bit bigger here. We're going to take a look at this photo and draw out anything that we can see that's not, you know, rocks. <laughs> so you're going to take a look at this and kind of what do you see here sort of thing. So it's the same thing as Scribble Challenge, but we want to draw out something else that we see. So maybe it's, you know, an eyeball there. Now, since I'm doing this digitally, I could uh, just fade this out and draw over this, but I'm just gonna draw right beside it, kind of uh, what I see in this drawing. So let's start this off right now. So immediately I see on this, uh, this rock here on top, kind of a head shape, right? Something like a little like this. And a little ear here. Maybe like a groundhog or something. <laughs> right? Well, I have a secret I'll tell you in a second about this rock and what it's actually called. You think it's called like gopher rock or something like that? No, maybe he's hiding behind there. Right? So we could do it that way just by kind of looking off of it. Or we could just get in here, fade this out, and zoom into the actual rock itself and kind of just trace over what we see. Whoop, there we go. Trace over what we see. So kind of what I was going for was the eyes. You know, you got definitely a nose here. see that right of course <laughs> of course you see that so the funny thing is <laughs> this is actually a rock in Joshua tree called polar bear rock I believe so when I saw that I had to stop and take a picture of it but we might see other things here as well so the whole idea of pareidolia is that you're trying to get your imagination moving and we oftentimes see things in things so in the clouds uh, in cracks and surfaces, um, you know, textures on walls, carpets. So you might take a screenshot of this and uh, draw something out yourself or pause this video, draw something out yourself. Feel free to share it with me if you'd like. Um, I'm going to take a real quick look here and see if I can see anything else peeking out at me. Usually it's like faces and we're going to try that the rule with the pareidolia is to draw out the first things that you see, Don't even if they're silly. So here I see kind of like a little nose shape here and like an eye, like maybe a Muppet looking guy. You know, it doesn't have to make sense. Right. There were a lot of rocks like this in Joshua Tree, <laughs> for sure. Here we go, There's something here, right? Right, if I squint a little bit, I might see like sunglasses right here. Again, it doesn't have to make much sense. Like, you know, you're just pulling out things that you're seeing. This is training your brain to just kind of identify shapes and loosen up a bit. It's actually going to help your, uh, 
here are the drawings. So I just want to show that that's pretty simple. Uh, that's a pretty simple uh, technique to do here, the pareidolia. And then sometimes you could just spin the canvas, turn it upside down and take a look at what stands out then. You know, I kind of see a, a boat here. It's kind of sunk, you see what I mean? Yeah, this can be a really fun exercise to do. That's why if you don't know what to draw, pick up a pick up a picture of something, a cloud. I think we even have a cloud here. Let's just take a look at what this cloud looks like. It's full blast here. Yeah, finding shapes and clouds is one of the favorite things you do when you're a kid. You know, here I see an eye for sure right here. Whoops. Here, I definitely see like an eye. You know, there's like all kinds of cool little shapes that I'm, I can see. I'm gonna draw like some kind of, some kind of squid monster floating through the sky, hiding in a cloud. All right, you see that? kind of alien creature. It's like a little star right there, kind of thing. Don't know what that's about. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to make sense. This is all about just getting your uh, mind and pencil moving. That's the first part. That's usually the first like 10 minutes or so, that's the kind of warm up that I'll be doing is something involving the pareidolia or scribble challenge. Um, you know, classic scribble challenge, you're just scribbling out like that, looking away. And now we're going to take a look at what that looks like a little bit easier. What do we got here? What do you see here? You can let me know in the comments <laughs> what you saw or what you what you draw out. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to stay on the same layer and just kind of work to draw this out. I often see a lot of fluid organic shapes like helmets. It's kind of fun to do like sci-fi, uh, sci-fi looking concept art based on this. Cause you got a lot of like swooping motions. And uh, so it's a lot of times, a lot of times I'll do like a helmet. I see a lot of rabbits, a lot of birds, but in this case, then my imagination starts going around this point where I'm like, okay, this is some sort of like visor or 3D or uh, what do you call it now? What do these kids call these days? Uh, virtual reality goggle set, <laughs> right? Your meta, Mark Zuckerberg special. Let's see. And he's got like, you know, he's put his headset on a stand on his nightstand. It's charging up. So now you can go from like, see how you can go from the, the real simple bear shapes into something that's a little bit more elaborate, like a science fiction kind of idea. Maybe this is like a headset that some kind of superhero, you know, or something science fiction, right? Yeah. So there you have it. That's the pareidolia. That's a good little five to 10 minute warm up. You could do that again, anytime, any place. Wow. The next topic is gesture drawing. So we're gonna draw small here. And I'm also gonna draw small on the iPad, but it's a little bit easier to show you that you can start with just a, um, uh, a post-it note, some kind of little sketchbook like this, even a field notes. These ones are a little bit smaller than field notes. 
can see that. But what I like to do is draw small. And that's another cool thing is that you can just draw out these gesture shapes and gestures, you know, they're, they're body shapes, motion lines, things like that. They don't have to be perfect. They're oftentimes they're just like stick figure esque, but we could draw out a whole bunch of them really small. Sometimes I'll just draw the dots for hands and then connect the arms in swooping motions like that. Right. And if you have some sort of um, uh, art prompt for the day, you don't always have to think big. You can think small like this. So like if your art prompt was uh, a gambler or something like that, I don't know how this is gonna actually come out. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the local recordings look better than what's on my screen right now. So say for instance, if your um, drawing prompt was a uh, cowboy, you might just sketch out really loosely. Maybe he's got an overcoat, of course the hat, right? And just work on the overall shape. He's gonna have a little hand over here. And you know, guess what? He probably has a little, you know, cowboy revolver. And they're just really, really loose, really, really loose shapes. Because right now we're figuring out the shadow and just the overall composition. You could sketch this out. Just keep it really rough. And again, drawing small like this, it doesn't look like much, but when you zoom in, or you can take this into your um, drawing programs or blow it up and make an actual bigger piece out of it. It's something that I like to do as well. I'm gonna use the same technique on the iPad here now. So now we're gonna do the same concept in digital art. So digital art, you know, I could have that picture of that post-it note right in here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all of those shapes and just give myself a new layer to kind of explain this and maybe a really dark uh, color for this one. So, you know, that post-it note size was only about mm, this big, right? So you might just sketch out some squares or something like that. It doesn't really have to be, but just in order for me to give this perspective of, you know, the size. And those are like mini post-it notes. And it's really easy to, to zoom in and zoom out on a digital uh, canvas like this. What I wanna do is I just wanna kinda keep it about the actual size of a post-it note. So I'm not over thinking this when you're drawing digitally, you're able to zoom in and kind of noodle to death with the detail. And I don't wanna do that. So uh, I'm gonna keep it about the size of the post-it note. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna, I always start with like where the head might be and then the shoulders. And those are the real basic shapes of a form, the legs, and try to just do this fast. Don't worry about perfect anatomy right now. It's all about the the body language, maybe. And you often find when you sketch real fast like this, you sometimes capture really fluid uh, shapes and motion in your art. I'll get a little bit closer for you to see here. And sometimes when you try to re-replicate that same pose, you can't quite replicate what you did in the quick motion. So that's what's the, that's what's interesting about digital art is that you could take this little guy here and blow him up and, and get the same pose, but we can talk about uh, maybe it's poses like, you know, flying at you. So I might draw the fists and the head and the, you know, the shoulders are back there and his little feet and foreshortening, right? It also makes you, that's not, this isn't a really good one. So this one's not good because you can't really form the silhouette. So you want your drawings to be, to have a nice silhouette usually. 
and that's what makes them kind of pop off better. This just looks like a blob right now. So I could do that one a little bit better from a small distance. So I'm gonna start with the head. Maybe he's got his hands up here. They're a little bigger, you see what I mean? And now we got the head and shoulders and the torso and the arms reaching out. This might not look like anything to you, but to me, I'm kind of fleshing out the basic of that body coming at me, flying up like in perspective, right? The more you draw like that, the more you just see these lines that I'm drawing here, you just kind of see them on the paper, if that makes any kind of sense. <laughs> it's just kind of natural. You'll also see things like the you know, the basic forms and structures and things like that. You'll just see where those those uh, sh those um, structure lines are kind of in your mind's eye. Some of the best artists can do automatic drawing that way, where it seems like they're drawing magically, uh, like uh, Master Kim Jong-ji, uh, that could just start in one corner and draw out the whole thing, which is pretty amazing. And I've heard that uh, Jack Kirby used to be able to do that too. I can't do that. I need to usually scribble around a little bit and figure it out. That's how I like to uh, to just kind of noodle and figure things out. But yeah, we might do a little, you know, little action sequence. I'm actually drawing a little bit too big right now, right? This is a little bit bigger on digital than I would like to do. But here we got this guy. It's a little stiff, a little stiff. I don't really like that. I don't like that one, but it's okay. You could just move on. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to go real small, right? They don't even have to really know what they're doing. Maybe this guy's like motioning for like, stop, don't come down this road, you know? <laughs> it's always good whenever you draw a gesture and it's kind of saying something to you like, no, don't, don't come down this road, you know? Um, and you could save these things in your sketchbooks and um, pull, pluck them out for later if you like that pose or that shape. Uh, you know, I'm just making these shapes up out of my mind, but you could also take a photograph or something that actually already has a pose and figure out the gesture by kind of drawing that. That's a fun little exercise to do too. I'm not doing that here. I like to do uh, my own poses and things like that. So, you know, now I might get a little bit, you know, a little bit more structure here I don't really have anything in mind at this point like there's no you know pose I'm going for this person might be like picking up something like a bucket a pail or something that's just what I wanted to to show there with some shadow we'll figure out the the uh the form and I do this a lot with my bigger pieces too they start as little tiny sketches like this, you know, maybe this guy's got like a, he's carrying something on his shoulders. You know, I don't know what it is, something big. It's just kind of pulling. And maybe this guy, let's make a guy pulling something. So now we got to get the, the energy behind this. He's got it on his shoulder. He's pulling a big, long, like, some kind of sled so it's very tight or maybe it's a big block of cement or something he's just really tugging it right so you can see the energy of the the gesture there right what else let's draw a guy hanging off this border here so i'll draw his two hands and maybe his head and then i'll just draw the lines connecting and he's just kind of hanging and hanging right off this border here. Help me, his little feet are dangling, right? That used to be something, this is something that you can do, you know, <laughs> in the margins of your, in the margins of your textbooks or your notes. Um, it's just kind of fun to, uh, to, uh, to experiment with lines and motion and things. And this person's holding another person who's now falling, right? Or almost ready to fall. Help me, hang on there, you know? 
So good sign if you're like scribbling things out and, you know, using your imagination, you can kind of hear the, the story or something that's going on, right? Um, yeah, and I might fill up this entire uh, page in a session where I'm just doing warm ups for 10 minutes. We're about 10 or 15 minutes into this one. Um, but I'm not too worried about, you know, what I'm doing. Like, I'm not too worried about what it's looking like or perfect anatomy again like that. Uh, what about two guys shaking hands? That's a classic one, you know, like two people t shaking hands. Like, you know, there's their hand, there's the, the action is right there. So I might just draw the, the hand first and, you know. And the faster you can kind of start to scribble these out the more it could the quicker everything goes the quicker your compositions for your comic book pages or your storyboards or uh, composition for your digital paintings can go by you can quickly kind of come up with something to flesh out from these small gesture lines um, then another thing about this type of move I usually start with the head and the shoulders and the arms and the legs but you can also work on your action lines or your power gesture. So you might just have a swoop like that. And then, you know, you know where this is going to go. So now the head, you want to want him to follow this line. So they call this like power, power line in your drawing. You know, let's see what he's doing here. I don't know what this guy's doing, but let's put another arm down here. So it's like he threw like a really big punch or something. Or, you know what, he's, you can see it now. He's kind of flying in. This is his leg and this is his foot. And this is his other foreshortened foot. A little, a little hard to see, but if I were to take that and blow up that scribble, <laughs> right? Doesn't quite look like much. But zoom that out, fade that out a little bit. And now we've got, we can start working out the form. Torso and the butt, the legs. start to see it now I'm always tempted to draw like spider-man or something like that might change it up a little bit from where it is it's kind of lanky but I'll keep this this arm on this side right I'm gonna have to change that up a little bit just for anatomy's sake Right. Then this arm's foreshortened. We'll get into. I won't. Won't really get into like too much foreshortening. Um, type illustration work. This isn't really about that. This is more a warm up. Or maybe we work on where the lighting's coming from. Too. Just to kind of keep ourselves in. Practice in thinking like that if you haven't drawn for a little while. It's just like, oh. Maybe it is a little spider man. Right. Just following the. Following the web. He's swinging out. All right, that was that was not too bad. A little long and lanky, but okay. Do another one real quick. Do one more. So we'll do like a 
the action line is a nice swooping line like that. Yeah. And the shoulders are here, usually the torso's here. Usually one's going that way, one's going this way. Going this way, right? See that? You can start to get some like cool scribble type pose there. This guy's got some swagger. He's kind of sp spinning his torso a bit. So one leg's going this way. Oops. So you see how it's like a swoop, a swoop, and then the toe points out. When you can add that type of motion to your drawing, um, it can really make for certain things to stand out more, I guess, in your composition and. This guy's kind of like just swaying along. <laughs> this is not a very unnatural pose here, but it's a good, it feels good to do. It doesn't have to make sense. It just feels right, you know. You can go in and flesh out the anatomy more later. This is a warm up to kind of get you uh, moving here. So we can even zoom in. Now we can just go back in the one that I didn't really like, we can figure that part out now. Get in there and, you know, he's a little stodgy, a little stiff. Maybe he's wearing some business, business attire, <laughs> you know. Right. It's like trying to throw a punch. Right. These are the gesture warm ups that you might do. You might fill up a whole page, like I said, of these and just do it in small notebooks, do it in whatever you, you know, whatever you have handy on hand. You could do this pretty much anywhere. Um, I always suggest carrying like a little field notes with you or a little pencil. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill up the rest of this page with just a bunch of gesture drawings. If you want to keep drawing along with me, I've got some other uh, drawing videos here that you can watch. And I've got tons of videos on my channel to help keep you inspired and keep your pencils out there moving. So I hope to see you back here real soon. It's back to the drawing board for me.